Um, welcome to this third video on figures and tables. So I'm Inge Grunberg, um, same as for the last videos. And in this part, I will show you something about both maps and data compilations. So data compilations is everything that displays numbers. So in theory, you could also um, have maps in this category, but I have them separate as we are here in geography and maps are really a central part of the work of most of you, I assume. And then um, I'll have the fourth video on some more general recommendations. So maps, here I have some examples. Maps can be really nice either in the methods. For example, here I show the location of my study site. As you can see already in the first glance that these two maps have a very different projection. So this is a global study from a friend of mine um, who did her PhD in Zurich, working on um, NDVI and phenology and lengthening or shortening of growing seasons. So she had a global data set as, and this is a, like a standard projection that you would often use for um, global maps. And also uh, the color scale is very different compared to the other study below, which is from an Arctic study um, showing how much um, organic carbon is stored in permafrost soils. And as it's only about the Arctic, this polar projection is much nicer than if he would have the same um, map as um, above the same projection because in above the polar areas especially are really um, distorted. So here it's easier to see which areas are actually big or small. And also this color scale is very different. It's of course uh, mostly a matter of taste, what you like, but also the first impression that the reader will get is very different. So that's definitely something to consider. So projection, color is important, but also maps um, often have additional elements. For example, a legend. Both of these maps have a legend, for example. But also often, unless it's a global map, but in smaller um, maps you will often have a north arrow or a scale is um, usually very good, except for global maps because there, a scale is impossible because it's differently scaled in different areas. But for maps you always need to consider uh, different additional elements which usually in the end then take up quite a lot of space. So for example here we are lucky that the legends can be quite small but sometimes if you have really a lot of different elements the legend can almost be as big as your map which is very unfortunate but you can't help it. Here are two more examples of maps, more to highlight two different things. This one I show because you can add a lot of different information types. So here, for example, all these little dots show where lakes disappeared in um, the Seward Peninsula, I think, definitely in Alaska. So this is a study of a colleague of us, um, also from Arvi. He studied uh, remote sensing images of um, this uh, peninsula and showed all the different lakes that either shrank or completely drained. And you see here that uh, the legend uh, includes two different items. So one is the absolute area of lake loss and the second um, the color codes is the relative lake loss. So you can uh, show both the absolute loss and the relative loss in the same map. For example here with size and color. And I, I like this example. I think it's very clear. And then there's another example uh, on this side and that's something where I want to make you aware of the problem of file size, because usually um, when you prepare a map, you kind of have your big screen, you see the whole map, you prepare the legend and everything. But when you, um, in the end, include it in a scientific paper, it's probably very small in the end. Especially um, in this paper, for example, it's a two column journal and the map were scaled down to just one column. And that's why these fonts here are really tiny, barely readable, and also very blurry. So that's a sign of the authors having saved their map as a JPEG. This always uh, reduces file size, but it's a very bad idea if um, the map includes some kind of writing or lines because they look blurry and distorted when you save it as a JPEG. So please never ever do that. 
If you really need to save something as a pixel graph, please use a PNG or TIFF. But I definitely advise you to save everything as a PDF and then the writing will just uh, stay the same no matter how you scale the whole map in the end. Yeah, and these are also more um, examples of how you can add more information. So here I showed you color and size of the dots. But also here the edit information, for example, is a little arrow pointing at a lake that drains. So this is a different study also about lake drainage, but a little bit earlier. And this circle also highlights important things. And here you have the scale bar, as I mentioned before, that this might be very useful for maps. With that, I'd like to come to the data compilations. So this is everything showing numerical data. And what you always need with showing numerical data is additional information, especially axes. So what are you showing on X and Y axis? But also you quite often need a legend. For example, here, if you have different lines. Sometimes if it's really just, for example, two lines, you could mention that in the caption, like the solid lines means this, the dashed line means this, but as soon as you have more, um, a little legend is always good. Units, please always uh, think about the units. Every axis, every variable needs a unit. For example, here the temperature is in, in degrees Celsius. And um, this T here obviously is explained in the caption. This is just only T instead of temperature because um, I had a lot of panels and I had to shrink them quite a bit so it wouldn't fit to, to have the whole word. But one thing I also like to illustrate here is that if you have two figures of the same content next to each other or similar content, you can get rid of one axis. So for example, here you don't need a second y axis. And it's also very advisable to always have the y axis in the same scale. Even if, for example, the highest here would only be in the middle of the figure, it would still be good to have the same scale to make it easily comparable and not a rescale for every figure if it's a similar content. Also here I have the same axis. So this is, these are two figures from my most recent paper. And this is a different example from computer science. This example I chose to also make you aware of different options just in terms of design. So these figures look very different. Um, for example, here I have a border once around the whole plot. This one doesn't have a border, this only has horizontal lines. I don't have any grid, but just some ticks. So there are really different options and it's no right or wrong usually unless it's really making the figure not clearly visible. But um, in general, you have a lot of different design options and I just advise you to test it out to figure out what you like most, but then to be very consistent throughout every figure in your paper. So for example, if you decide to go for this option, just have horizontal lines, no border around and no ticks at these numbers, just uh, do it for every figure you have so it looks nice and consistent and not change your general style for every figure. So these are two more examples, um, nice ones in general, I like them. So this is um, another figure from the lake drainage study that I showed you before. And it compares the temperature in this one um, particular year to the average temperature versus this thick um, line. And this is a very nice version to see, to highlight these top temperature peaks and the negative one with a different color. Um, as soon as it's above the mean, it's red colors. Below the mean is blue colors and then even darker red where it's above one standard deviation. So here you clearly see these really warm days in winter, which apparently had an effect on lake drainage. What I found interesting on this, pay, uh, on this figure is that it actually has a title. And usually if you do uh, figures for scientific papers, you never have titles. All the information that would go into a title goes into the caption instead. So rather not have titles, um, apparently it's possible, but um, in general, just remove all titles and put this information in the caption. And even if you have multiple panels, that st still works because you 
name the panel like here A and then in the caption you write like A and then what you have would put as a title otherwise. This study here is a, from a different subject, it's more human geography and they studied um, the effect of different temperatures on conflicts at three different scales and this I, I want to show because I really like this part. So you have the overview map with the three different scales in the same color as here these three panels. So it's directly clear that red is a smaller scale and then blue is all sub-Saharan Africa and um, green are the whole tropics. And this study actually is really interesting although it's not my field of study but they really showed very nicely that in all the different scales, temperature plays a major role. So, so as soon as we have a temperature anomaly of, for example here, plus one or two degrees, so it's one or two degrees warmer than in general, you have a much higher risk of conflicts in these areas. And they tested this on these different scales for local violence and civil wars and um, civil conflicts always the onset of course because then it might take several years until the conflict is um, finally resolved hopefully at one point. This figure is also very special because it has a caption on top and this is only because this was the highlight figure in science so they have a special kind of formatting for the highlight figures but usually the caption of figures always goes below. So this is another example from my friend uh, who, uh, with where I showed the map in the beginning with the uh, um, growing season lengthening and shortening. And this I find a little bit difficult because it has a lot of information and a lot of abbreviations and it's very hard to figure out what's actually the point of this figure. And I want to make you aware of these so-called navigation costs. So the reader who wants to understand this figure needs to spend a lot of time on all the details and the caption and maybe even looking up the abbreviations again before he or she finally understands this um, figure. And that's something in general it's not advisable. Of course it might still be worse to show this figure if this is really the most clear way you can phrase your results but it's difficult and you need to be careful with that. For example here I think the main point is that these red or blue lines actually spread so throughout the years the growing season gets longer both um, on a global scale and for this one sub-region which is called cold and mesic zone. But it's hard to see and I find it a bit difficult to include different ways of calculating these growing season lengths here so blue and red are just different methods. I would have thought maybe it's better to concentrate just on one of these methods to make this figure a little bit easier. And here's another example that I, I, I find it even funny. It's so colorful. And when I look at this first, I wonder, oh, these nice flowers. And I think of the German names and the Latin name of these flowers, which are Campalua. I think it's maybe bell flower. I'm not quite sure of the English name. But definitely I would expect it to be about these flowers. And then you read the um, axis and it says June sea ice extent. So it actually has nothing to do with the flowers, but only with the growing season in general. So I find this yeah, very distracting. The flowers quite nice, but have nothing to do with the plot. So this is really um, an, an example of how not to do it. Also, I'm not quite sure why it shows like a blue background and the lines have kind of shades. Here we have the axis right in the middle of all the lines. Um, it's a bit, yeah, it's a bit weird. And they have two axes here, which is okay. So of course you can do that, but then this one doesn't have zero. It's the same as the axis. So all in all, this is a very confusing example where the content, it's probably quite an easy content. You see there are just a few dots and a few lines. You could have made like a nice clean graph with it, but these um, authors went for a very colorful but also very distracting version. So um, this is already the last example from my data compilation and in the next video I will um, continue with showing you more details on 
uh, figure design, for example, and also introduce some tools to um, make your figures. Thank you for watching the video. <laughs>